Thanks to EA for sponsoring this video. Hey lovelies, it's Kate. Welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. I got early access to the Sims 4 Life and Death and I decided to build a castle in Ravenwood. This amazing new world does not only look stunning, but it also has an empty 64x64 lot, which I of course had to build on. But before we jump right in, I want to announce a giveaway for the Sims 4 Life and Death expansion pack. I give away one key for the EA app. To enter, leave a comment with hashtag life and death giveaway and share what you are most excited about in the new pack. The giveaway ends October 31 and the winner will be announced in a video on November 1st. Check out the description below to see the giveaway information in detail. And this giveaway is made possible and sponsored by the EA Creator Network. Thanks to EA for making this possible and good luck to everyone. But back to the build. Yeah, so I decided to build a castle. I'm super excited to show you this castle and I'm like so hyped up right now because this whole process has been so exciting. I announced this in my last video. I was invited by EA to contribute three builds to the Sims for Life and Death expansion pack. You can check out my last video if you want to hear me talk about the process and if you want to see how I've like built some stuff and I'm just so excited so I've been eagerly waiting for this pack to come out and I'm just so excited to finally talk about it and I'm so excited to like show you what I've built in the early access so this bit here was created in the early access so this castle is not part of the pack of course it's just something that I created in early access but I just still quickly wanted to mention that I got you built for the pack and that you can check out my last video and I also want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you for making all of this possible for me you made it possible for me to like build this channel and this amazing community I love you so much you made it possible for me to be accepted into the EA creator network and yeah I now got to contribute builds to the sims for life and death which is a dream come true you made this possible by supporting me and by like allowing me to do this here thank you so much and yeah because of you i'm also in the early access like thank you so much and i'm like so excited to show you the castle so you probably know how excited i was when i found out that there is an empty 64 by 64 lot i mean there's also one with a cemetery on it which is so amazing it was built by create for sims and it looks so stunning but it's always like a problem if you have a community lot which is like part of a world and it's kind of necessary for the gameplay so it's like always a bit difficult to just bulldoze a lot like this just because you want to have a 64 by 64 to build on it so the best thing to happen to a builder is an empty 64 by 64 lot just sitting there ready to be built on like an empty canvas just waiting for you to build and I got so excited when I found out that there will be a gigantic lot and I stayed very true to the neo-romanian architecture in the building process for the pack of course and here when i got the early access i also just wanted to freestyle a bit i just wanted to use all the items and do whatever i want i used the move objects cheat here so i just built whatever and i thought okay there's a 64 64 lot there is enough space to really use the train tools so i just wanted to build something that gigantic and I decided to build a castle. There are a lot of amazing objects in this pack. Build by in general is amazing. I know you might think I'm biased because I got to like help with this pack a little bit but I can tell you the team did like the most amazing job creating these beautiful assets The the items look amazing. Build by is so so good and what's even better is debug because when you look at what I'm building here when you see these pillars for example which have the darker gray color and all these little items I stumbled upon all of them and debug in the edit so if you want to create something like this you only really need the pack and the base game because that's what I'm using here so you can use the amazing furniture to furnish 
furnished. You can use the beautiful windows. There are a lot of new windows to like decorate the house on the outside. But additionally, we have these amazing debug and of added objects and you can create some really spooky, amazing builds. And at first I really wanted this castle to be a bit more spooky, but I think it ended up like being rustic and there are some like little influences here and there from from the world's architecture but it's like really just a fantasy style after all and it's not too dark and gloomy so it's not as spooky as I wanted it to be but it just kind of went into this direction. So the main issue when you want to build a castle in general in The Sims 4 is that you can only build four stories high so you really quickly reach the limit here because a castle is usually really really high and to kind of fix this issue I built this castle in two sections so we have the front section where I've built the stairs and kind of the entrance where we have these two little towers and this is just one building so I could build this four stories high and that's it and then I elevated the terrain and I built the rest of the castle separately on a hill and once again I was able to use four more stories and it totally makes sense to do this for a castle because you don't really have to connect the entrance area, the gate, a bridge or something or the castle wall to the rest of the castle so it's really easy to do it this way and this way I was able to like generate a lot of height like the whole build is really really high and this was like a little trick that I used and here you can already see the two different levels. I've just attached some stairs to make it work and I was trying to find the correct height for the terrain at the top because I didn't want the rest of the castle to sit too high or too low. These rocks are from Debug and they are from base game. They have the perfect shape and color for what I was going for. And in some areas I was using the basement tool because you can simply build a basement and then you can place a debug rock for example on the inside. So it's kind of poking through the ceiling and this way you can hide it in the basement but you can strategically place it because sometimes a rock like this is too tall, too big and when a part of it is hidden in the basement you can like strategically place it. So that's what I've done here as well. I just wanted to hide a big part of the terrain. I just don't like when I have these very steep slopes and they have a different color. I cannot change the color. So what I'm usually doing is I'm just using a rock to hide it and also the flat base game bush, which I've used a lot here. And this is a debug item, this is a fence and you can see that there are these fence posts basically that I'm also placing and I wanted this fence to go around like all around this level and then I'm just going to use a roof to fill in the area and I had no idea how to really like make all of this work like you can see that I'm trying to find the perfect position for this round tower I placed this roof decoration in the front but I wasn't really happy with this so this build went through a couple of changes definitely but here at this point it's kind of coming together slowly you can see that it's starting to make sense and when you do when you do it like this it totally makes sense to have the castle walls and everything on a different level as I said. I could have made the whole castle wall thing in the front bigger so it kind of goes around it but I found these round walls which are from debug as well from life and death and I just used them to like have this round shape for the whole thing so it looks like a castle which is like sitting on a round hill kind of and you can see how high the foundation is at this point. I'm actually going to increase this so as I said I was raising the terrain to have this part of the castle sitting higher but then I thought okay it's looking boring and it's kind of lacking height and I was then just moving the whole building up a bit increasing the foundation and this way it just looked better and I then used a debug object for the tower in the center but I didn't like it they I don't know it kind of looked like you know when you move an object inside a room and it kind of turns dark like a shadow and even though this wasn't the case here I just didn't like the color combination so I changed the tower a bit. I don't know it just looks like as if it 
was moved into a room, if that makes sense. I actually double checked, but it wasn't. And yet at this point, I'm just using basium shells to really decorate this. I like to do this to have custom freezers. And we have these amazing new freezers, like a trim going around a room in this pack. And here I've just used it around these towers at the bottom to like make the top bigger because when you think of a tower like this you would have like a slim tower and then there's kind of like an overhang and I kind of used this trim for this purpose here but this is not its intended purpose so usually if you want to use it in the way it was intended to be used to really follow the neo-romanian architecture you would build a room and then you would add the trim and the trim is one tile big so the trim going around your room adds one tile on each side and you then place your roof on top and you make it so the roof directly sits above the trim and this is like the idea behind this trim when you look at neo-romanian architecture this is kind of the architectural direction and this world is like inspired by new Romanian architecture. I just want to explain it because I think it's like really fun to just know this if you want to use it like this. But as I always say, just have fun with other items. You can like create builds which are authentic and you recreate something from real life or you you take an idea and change it or you build a fantasy building you can build whatever you want and here i'm using the trims in a different way as well so everything is fun and fine but i think it's a really interesting piece of information and it was actually very helpful here to be able to like use the trim for the tower like this i wish we could use any trim for any wall height because some of the bigger trims can only be used on the tallest wall height or something and sometimes I'm planning out a build and then I want to apply a specific freeze and I, I can't and then when you increase the wall height it might change the build's look completely. I don't know if you can relate but this happens to me so often and I mean I'm using the tallest wall height a lot which is why I rarely like probably encounter this issue but I don't know sometimes I try to balance things and I'm I might use like the smallest wall height for one of four levels or something and yeah here I'm using a flop piece to fill in the area so I just I just raised the terrain as you saw and then placed these round walls on top of each other I simply raised them using the keyboard and then I filled in the area using floor pieces I've used the triangular ones to like make it work so it really fits and you can see that it's now looking like a cliff even though the round debug walls are sitting directly on the train and I then used the seam debug fence which I had used for the roof area and this way it kind of looks more polished and I then used rocks to like hide this area because you can see that I've like created this cliff but then I was still dealing with this whole exposed terrain and the stairs are kind of sitting in the middle which I don't really like so I just decided to use more debug rocks to hide it. I've used some bushes and trees from debug. These autumnal trees look so so stunning. They are also from the pack and I then expanded the slope so in the beginning when I was trying to figure out the whole layout I was like adding the slope and I was realizing like at this point here that the slope is not leading anywhere so I fixed this this as you will see I'm going to add some stairs and it's going to lead to the patio in the back so it's functional I just didn't want to remove the slope I felt like it looks so cool it just made sense for the whole composition and I don't know maybe you know this but sometimes something doesn't make sense but you wanted to add it to a build because it it's like looking good it makes sense for the composition but you don't want to sacrifice it and remove it and form follows function but sometimes I don't know you just cannot let go and I just had to make the slope work somehow and here I'm adding lots of flat base game bushes just to hide the terrain I left some of the terrain exposed just so it's really visible that it's terrain I feel like sometimes I'm hiding the terrain so much that it's not really visible that it's terrain I mean what else could it be of course it's terrain tools but I feel like I'm like really 
hiding a lot of the terrain sometimes so I left some of it the way it is and here I'm just using more rocks to hide the whole stairs situation that I had created to just defend the slope and adding more base game bushes and here at this point it, it's really starting to make sense I feel like we have these debug rocks at the bottom it kind of looks realistic but also not realistic at all <laughs> like this is so over the top and yeah then started to furnish so this is the kitchen i'm so proud of this because i feel like this nook has a really good size you know that my kitchens are always oversized but i feel like here this just makes sense this is a castle and the kitchen can be much bigger and the the whole layout is kind of more the layout of a regular residential home so you can just move into this castle but you can live in it like in a mansion but the size makes sense because sometimes even for a castle mansion my kitchens are too big and cold completely out of proportion so i'm proud of this and i've used this beautiful new kitchen set the kitchen is so so stunning i feel like whenever like we get a new pack and there's a new kitchen it's one of the most exciting parts about it like at least when it comes to the interior when it comes to furniture kitchens are very exciting and i just used this floor from the base game to like have a different floor for the kitchen and the rest of it is wood which is from life and death and i then just started to use some columns to separate everything more and as you will see i'm very soon going to use a fence from the pack to separate it even more i don't know if it makes sense but i think it kind of looks fancy and interesting I then added like this dining room area and at first I wanted to have the piano over there but I just ended up um, placing it in the living room area and this is like one open living room area which just makes sense like furnishing it was so intuitive and fun it just really came along and it just made sense it's always so amazing to use new furniture from a pack to furnish it just comes along and, and happens but i also feel like the floor plan just made sense we have this beautiful round tower to have a reading nook this office area and i just furnished everything and had the best time and i'm also going to work on a separate living room as you will see th so this is kind of also for entertaining guests and every everyone comes together eats and maybe sits down to have a conversation but i'm also going to like build a personal living room which is really typical for a mansion i think and this sofa is also so stunning and i decided to go with this really warm brown swatch because it just matched the wood and i really love this at first i wanted to incorporate a bit of a contrast and i wanted to use a different swatch for the sofa but i just ended up using this one I changed the wallpaper a bit because originally I had used the, the brick that I had used on the outside, on the inside because of the whole castle vibe, but I changed it and this room here is right behind the stairs and it's just the main bathroom and these new items are so beautiful. I just added a door on the right side to make it accessible and on the left I used the beautiful new bookshelves. So this is... Just the personal living room I mentioned earlier, I used the fireplace in the center, bookshelves left and right, and then I added a little corner for watching TV. So this is really just the personal space of the family. And I just love all these swatches. I love the colors. And I mean, the wallpaper is a bit different from the wood that I have used for the curtains and stuff but I just love how it like kind of works and here I'm working on a bedroom and for the bedroom I decided to use this green color because I love it so much I love this color and I also love kitchens in this color like in real life in general I'm so obsessed and here I especially love the contrast between the cool tone green and this beautiful wooden colors and yeah just decorated this using all the new items I built a bathroom directly next to it this is more like bluish i feel like it's not as green but like especially the wallpaper like the wallpaper is like blue and i feel like the same goes for the bathtub but i just wanted to use a bit of color here and that to make it more exciting and for the next bathroom i used red i just wanted this to be very colorful and bright so all these swatches match so perfectly and for this room i was just going for red so it's really really loud and beautiful i love this i also included a tv and then here in this room, you can see that the pillars from debug, which I had used on the outside of the tower, 
These are kind of visible on the inside, so half of the pillar is on the outside and the other half is on the inside. So I just decided to incorporate it and embrace it and I feel like this room looks very medieval because of this. And I use this beautiful like almost pinkish wallpaper and it's such a soft beautiful color palette here. It's so warm and inviting and I love this so so much. And this sit here, you can see lots of screenshots so you can see what I've built. I'm going to upload this build to the gallery really soon. I'm so excited to share it. I hope that you will love this build. I hope that you will enjoy The Sims for Life and Death. And as I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, don't forget to check out the giveaway and join it. And good luck to everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And once again, thank you so much for all of your support and to making all of this possible for me. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. I love you all so, so much. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye.